It's spring in central Otago, deep in the heart of New Zealand's South Island. An area with an abundance of both natural beauty and, of course, wild game. Spring offers hunters an opportunity to restock their wild meat supplies, as hungry game species seek fresh nourishment in their quest to regain condition after the harsh winter months. Here we are in the deep south, so uh, 1st of November we're off for a spring hunt. See how we get on. This time of year the stags aren't in uh, antler, they're in velvet, so we'll leave them alone. We'll see if we can find some nice meat animals for stock up the freezer for the barbie season. Got my good mate Sam Yulee behind us in the Polaris, which uh, will take the Hilux up a wee way and probably get the Polaris up even a bit further and, and then it, from there we'll leg it. Pretty spectacular country here. Got to be a bit careful this time of year, the spring wind comes through, the northwest the blows pretty dry wind through and it pumps through here where we're heading up where the chamois are, we'll be up pretty high. But uh, overall I think we're set for some good, good weather this weekend, so we'll, we'll surely do alright. Check that view out, eh? Yeah, the old luxury of the vehicles was nice, but uh, I think now gears on the back, we'll put our head down and focus on getting out the back there and see if we can knock something over. A little bit of leg work, eh? Mm. Yeah, lead the way, brother. Some pretty good country over the back there, and probably got to try and earn an animal uh, as best we can. From a distance, the mountainous terrain of central Otago consists of a seemingly barren landscape, characterised only by the scars of severe climatic exposure. On close inspection though, this dramatic terrain reveals itself to be home to a multitude of flora and fauna. Alpine tussocks, punctuated by outcrops of schist rock, not only make for a stunning visual landscape, but offer superb habitat for alpine and subalpine game species, such as red deer and chamois, or chamois as they're known here in New Zealand. Steep terrain such as this provides a challenge for even the most seasoned of hunters. So to successfully hunt in this country, a hunter must be fit, patient and prepared. In areas exposed to hunting pressure, deer will be nervous, only exposing themselves in the morning and evening, tempted by the nourishment of spring growth, now prospering in this once snow-filled landscape. Red deer have exceptional senses, protecting them from their natural predators, the grey wolf and brown bear in Europe, and of course here in New Zealand, from man. The chamois is a truly alpine game species, often found perching precariously amongst rocky outcrops and in high alpine meadows. With superb sight and agility, particularly in rough, broken ground, the chamois is seldom found far from the refuge of steep terrain. Red deer and chamois not only represent a fantastic sporting opportunity, but are highly regarded for their exceptional culinary offerings, which is the motivation behind today's expedition. The central Otago lowlands sit at an altitude of a thousand feet above sea level, so after climbing for over an hour, Dan and Sam have now worked their way to an altitude above three and a half thousand feet. At this elevation, the air is not thin enough to have a noticeable effect on the human body. The real danger lies in the combination of extremely dry mountain air, low humidity, high perspiration and rapid evaporation. These factors make severe dehydration a serious threat to those who explore this terrain. Therefore, finding a reliable water source is paramount to a hunter's ability to maintain physical strength and mental focus. Tell you what, mate, if we didn't have that snow last night, there probably wouldn't be much water in that creek. We just get a wee bit out of it. Yeah, good stuff. Mm. Oh, I don't know about you, mate, but I'm a bit puffed. Yeah, I don't know, mate, I reckon uh, a couple of little undulations here, so I reckon, yeah, we pitch our tent here and... Mm. Head out for a hunt and a nice easy spot to come back to tonight and a bit sheltered out of that wind. But you're setting the tents up in the dark, isn't it? Exactly. Thought there's something sitting in the tussock there? Oh yeah, I see that, yeah. That might be a sham, eh? Yeah. I think there's some good country, a bit lower at the moment, that warm air and, and a bit of spring rain. I think maybe we should head down a bit lower and have a look over into that next catchment. What do you reckon? Yeah, it sounds good, mate. No chamois in that bluff system. There's two deer. 
3D, 4D. Yeah, on our on our spur. Yeah. Couple of deer down there. Three, in fact, quite a nice sort of protected area away from, out of the wind. It's a pretty gnarly country down in there, but uh, they find their way into some of those spaces. There's a bit of feed. So there's a couple of nice uh, eating animals down here, and we thought we'd take one for the table. So we're just going to sneak down, get out of the wind, come around, and uh, come out just on the crest of the spur and, and take a shot. So we'll see how we go. right down here coming out in the tussock. Yeah. That's the one you want. What range have I got mate? 153. 153. Yearling's the back one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take the yearling now. Perfect mate, that's the yearling we're after. Form condition. Yep, perfect. Yeah. Uh, good stuff, nice place to uh, shoot an animal like this in as well. It's amazing country. Good clean kill mate. Just through the shoulder is it? Yep. Nice one. Yeah, you got a bit of molting there eh? Losing the winter coat. Yeah, nice one. That should be a good eater. Oh uh, well, might have to start cutting her up. I think the shooting part's quite easy compared to the walk out looking at that. Yep, shooter's on us mate, you get to carry her out of here. Rightio, so now that we've uh, got the beast cleaned out, we're going to um, make a backpack. So she's easy to carry out of here. So basically all I'm doing is I'm just finding for the knee joint. Slice the skin around the back, but being careful not to slice that tendon because that's actually what we're going to use to to um, make our straps for our pack. So just slicing in behind the tendon here, the foreleg. That's going to be one strap there. Finding that joint, slicing right around, cutting through all the membrane and cartilage. Twist, snap it, just repeat that process. Coming in behind the tendon, up to the knee joint. Done. And all we do, we've already made a couple of incisions here in the back, back legs. Feed that hock through there. Always feed the uh, legs from the inside out, that way they're not going to dig into you. And now uh, that's all ready to be carried out now. So, uh, Good luck, Dan. Cheers, mate. Nice warm day. We'll have a good sweat on after that one. That's it. Not quite as comfy to get into as the old uh, day pack, but uh, pretty can't feel the same. Cheers for the butchering there, mate. No worries, it's a good fit on you. Bag manufacturing might be your next uh, <laughs> career move. Good stuff. Nice one. Right, I'm gonna start hitting that hill because uh, I'm so you might catch me up. Yep, good one, mate. Perfect size animal for a carry, actually. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a chamois back sitting on that spur. Just to the right of that tussock. Cool. See that? Sitting down. Yeah, that's got to be one, isn't it? Yeah. Still a good distance away, aren't they? Right, I say we leave these fellas be. Get over the ridge. Go see what we can find over there. Yeah, let's do it. Just coming into the right time of day now, I think things are going to start moving about soon. So. Typically, we'd expect to find game in the scrub and bluff country down here below us. Not only does it provide visual protection from the hunter, it also provides important protection from weather. So we're just going to come through here, sit down on the end of this spur, and see if we can glass some game. Three deer down, feeding on that face. It's about four there. Yeah, they're pretty safe, I'd say. Yep. Oh, yeah, that chamois still down there. Just still on that little bony face it was on before. 581. Still quite a long way off. There's a deer. Yeah, they're onto it. Deer KG, eh? KG critters. I think we'll push on, eh? Stitch kicking in. Tell you what, I think we should head over to that ridge over there and jump on the duck over the other side. Duck over the other side and make our way down and maybe just pop up through some of those small saddles on that ridge and have a look over here. Yeah. Big country like this, it's key to get up high and survey your territory from above. The only problem is on weather. And right now, beautiful day, but the wind's absolutely howling through here. So uh, warm gear's essential, cover up, that wind chill factor is just massive out here. So uh, rug right up from the, from the pants, the jacket. If you can wear a beanie or a hat, pull the hood up. That wind chill factor, you can lose a lot of temperature out of your head. So um, that's key, and just nestle down and keep on the move as well. Stay in the rock for a while, glass some country, nothing there, move on, find somewhere else. We had a bit of a big morning, uh, shot a deer, carted it back to base camp We decided now we'd really like to get a chamois so what we've done is we've come up quite high up onto a bit of a razorback and it's super windy on this side, the wind's really pushing up but it's quite sheltered on the other side so what we're going to do is we're going to come along here through the windy side poke our nose up and hopefully there's a few chamois that we know sort of is good chamois habitat on the other side of here on the bluff and we're going to just try and come over in a nice sheltered area and see if we can find one to, to have a crack at the chamois, most definitely their eyesight's their best feature, so they, they look down, tends to be one of their um, one of their faults really in, in terms of the way predators can take advantage of them, so we're going to uh, try and stay high, look down on them, and they should hopefully be looking below themselves, which gives us a little bit of an upper upper hand, so we'll see how we go, sounds good anyway, let's see if we can put the, uh, the principle to practice. As, as planned, we've just popped over here. It's nice and sheltered, and there's Shammy just feeding in the gully below us. Still quite a long way off. It's hard to tell if there's a good eater amongst them. Spot a four Shammy down here, just on this wee tussocky face. Just basking in the sunlight, really. Hard to tell from this distance how good they are, so we're probably going to have to get a, a bit closer. But uh, good to see them all the same. Everyone loves it when a plan comes together. Hatch your plan and it all works out, it's good. Sometimes it doesn't go that way. Haven't got one on the ground yet. Right mate, let's get down on that next little spur and set up. Oh, there's a nice chamois. Doesn't look like a bad animal at all. Sounds good. Down low, just above the bush. Right out in the sun, just above that bit of bracken. He's, he's gone out of sight. Oh, hang on, there's another one. Way closer. 
just just at the bottom of that spur, tucked up in the shade. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. We'll move in for a closer look. Yes, I'm following you down there, mate. Yeah, he's just here, just down in front. You see him? Oh yeah, got ya. See his head looking at us. We needed to come this way. If he shows himself, he's just gone into the bush. If he shows a good clean shot, Sam's gonna try and tip him over. Yep, she's down. Yeah. Good shot, mate. Bit of a retrieve on that one. <sighs> yeah, she's, she's rolling a wee way. She's falling a wee way. There's our wee sham. Yeah. There's a wee buck. So we buck shimmy. Good eating size, obviously being a young one. Uh, tend, the old ones tend to be a bit tough and, and gnarly, but this one will be nice. Yeah, nice I'm not the biggest fan of shimmy, eh? but most of the time it's probably because I've tried something that was a little too old, but these young ones taste taste good. So horn size probably, well, I don't know, might be seven inches. Um, Pretty irrelevant probably on an animal like that, isn't it? Sort yeah, of? basically with a shimmy you're looking for about nine on a, on a buck for what they class as a trophy, but we're not out here trophy hunting, we're meat hunting today, so pretty good result really. We um, actually planned plan that we hatched came together nicely and was actually moving in on the on the four chamois we seen earlier and we came across this one um, just sitting down in this little gut here, so took the opportunity. And good eater, lovely animal is she? With a quality eating chamois now on board, there remains only one final task to complete, the long trek back to camp. That was a good wee pump. <sighs> Although the promise of a warm fire and a cold beer is enough to put a spring in any hunter's step. What better way to reflect on a successful spring hunt in the hills and to start formulating a plan for the next expedition. Cold in that wind out there before, but geez, she's nice by the fire now. <laughs> 